<laughs> All right. Uh, today we got a 1985 Honda 700. So we need to clean the carbs. Uh, these are called downdraft carbs because they're mounted this way and not horizontally. Like they don't mount this way. They actually mount downwards. So um, anytime doing like a banked set of carbs, like carbs that are connected that you can't do separately, you usually want to label them. I've got one here and two there. And I've got one and two. So we're going to keep the carbs completely separate. But other than that, it's just doing two carbs at the same time. Uh, we're going to get the hoses off this first. Oh, also know that I've got the the fuel side of the carburetors up so I can see the one and two. But you don't want to be putting the wrong parts in the wrong carbs because sometimes they do run different jets and stuff in the carbs because sometimes one cylinder will run hotter than the other. So one will run leaner. So they'll... Uh, adjust for that in the carburetor but not always so these 30 year old hoses we got to try to get off sometimes with hoses it's better to get them spinning or twisted first before you try to pull them off So, I'm going to start with the top of carb number one. Right, these are CV carbs. They're not your typical slide carburetor because a vacuum controls a diaphragm on the top of the carburetor and lifts the slide to help um, to help control the air intake. So basically, uh, with the four stroke, if you have a, just a normal slide carburetor or a butterfly carb, if you smack the throttle really fast, it'll dump a bunch of fuel into the motor really quick. And these four strokes can't really accept that much air so much. So, uh, it kind of helps slow down for the quick acceleration and deceleration. I'll show you guys here in a second. All right, so in this carb, we got a butterfly valve right here. And on the same carb, we've got this here. So the vacuum controls this, opens this up slower or faster based on the vacuum in the motor, and this butterfly valve here is controlled by the, th the throttle cable. So when you when you open the, not squeeze the throttle, when you twist the throttle, this is what you're controlling, but the vacuum in the motor controls this slide here. So this will move slower than the butterfly. So we gotta take this apart. Be gentle with this diaphragm. If you rip it, it won't work anymore. And that is no bueno. Let's set him over here. That's kind of ugly. All right, so now we're gonna take the float bowl off that same carb. We're still on carb number one. So now in the float bowl, take the float out. the needle there's the needle oh it does have a removable seat alright
Yeah. All right, so we got the float needle and seat out of it. Now we got the, this is the main jet with the emulsifier tube, and then we've got the pilot jet here. So we're gonna pull him out. Try to pull the main out of the emulsifier tube. Right, the whole thing's gone. Oh. All right. Well, there's one carb, so we're gonna do the same thing to the other carb. All right, so we got both of these stripped. I don't really see an air screw or a fuel screw, so I do see a little plug there, but I don't know, I don't think that's anything. So sometimes I got jets in here and other CV carbs just to control the amount of vacuum, but all right, we're gonna go to the parts washer and then use some carbon choke. All right, guys, we got everything out of these. I'm not gonna split them. I don't see any reason to split them. So uh, now that we've got both carbs disassembled, um, I went ahead in a parts washer and I cleaned everything on the outside and the inside, but that doesn't really clean the passageways out. So really to get the, the, the carb bodies clean, you really gotta go through with some carbon choke or something and uh, break clean, but you gotta, you gotta start spraying everything out, try to flush everything out. So, the big thing you wanna do when you're blowing out the pilot jet is kind of know where everything should be blowing out of. So when doing the pilot circuit, you can kinda of see what's connected to what. I know if I blow in this pilot circuit, it's gonna come out of here on the, the fuel side. On the fuel side right down in here. I know it's gonna come out, so I gotta make sure it's coming out of there. But this is the pilot circuit. One thing I'm not super sure of is it's spraying out of here too. Which kinda of makes me think there's an air screw here, but it's just a hole. Which makes me nervous that uh, maybe the air screw is broke off. So we're gonna investigate that. But that would mean that this one over here would be an air screw too. Oh, this was on these hoses. Okay, so the hoses that connect everything control that, okay. So instead of having an air screw on this, like a normal carburetor that I'm familiar with does, the hoses that wrap around the carb control the low speed circuit of this. So basically we're just gonna finish blowing everything out with carbon choke. Just kinda helps flush everything out. The guy that owns these carbs had bought a carb kit for this, and I'm assuming on eBay, and I'm assuming it was a cheap kit, because uh, when looking at this a little closer, I don't, I don't think we're really gonna use much of it. Um, if any of you guys ever buy a carb kit online, I would always get really particular with it and start really looking at stuff before you just go and throw in parts in there that look like it. So, this is just, I guess, me being more on the safe side, but 
This is the pilot jet, and I scuffed up the outside, the original one, and I can read on the outside it's a 42. So I looked at the new one. I don't see any stampings on this anywhere, and I also can't see down to the center. So I can just barely blow through it. So this jet needs cleaned anyways. Like I don't know if there's a piece, like a chip down in there from when they machined it but it needs cleaned anyways. Just cause it's a brand new jet doesn't mean that it's actually any good to just throw in your bike. So just because like the main jet that came in the new kit, it doesn't have any labels or anything on it. So I just don't really trust this. I don't want to have to try to jet the bike. I don't even have the bike here. I'm just cleaning the carbs. So I'm not going to be throwing these junk Chinese parts in it and then just giving them the carbs back and hoping for the best. The emulsifier tube's a different length. So, by like an actual, like a decent amount. You know, obviously if you don't account for the main jet there, it's like an eighth of an inch longer. So that's gonna screw with things. So I'm just not very impressed with this Chinese kit. I do think that the needle and seat might work. So, I think I'm going to try and use this seat with the new crush washers because, I mean, you can't really go too wrong on crush washers. And the O-ring looks like it fits pretty decent. So we're going to put some grease in that bowl and we're going to slide this on the bowl. So we are going to reuse that just because the old gaskets, the old gaskets look really flat and they've got a lot of high tack on them or gasket sealer, whatever they used. So I'm just not a big fan of these ones. So we're gonna try to use the new ones. Another thing I noticed too, is the needle is a lot thicker on in the kit than came from the with the bike. So that would change how it runs too. So I just, there's a lot of things about this kit that I'm not a fan of. So definitely be careful whenever you buy something like this on eBay make sure that you go over everything but so we're going to start cleaning all the old stuff up and then we're going to start assembling these carbs All right, so we got both both uh, most fire tubes and main jets cleaned, and uh, both pilot jets. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start assembling the one side and then the other. So make sure you got your sides lined back up. We're gonna start with number two just because it's here. All right, what works best on seats, or yeah, is steel wool. All right, so we're gonna stick the old seat back in it. How close are the needles? Those actually might work. We're gonna try the new one. We can bench test this too to actually see if this is gonna seat before I give it back to the guy. Unless it all oh, fits, okay. Now we're going to take the pilot and thread that back in.
Take the emulsifier tube with the main jet and thread that back in. Alright, that's pretty much it for the bottom. Alright, we got the carb bowl pretty decent. So, take a little bit of grease. Vaseline works well too. I just don't have any. This o-ring sits quite a bit above the surface of this groove, so I'm not super worried about it. It should seal pretty good. Feels like it's in there pretty good. We got all the jets and stuff back in there. So now we're just going to take her and... All right, so now we're gonna do the top. So this rubber boot, the big boot on top, doesn't usually like to stay. Usually it's swelled up a little bit bigger. So this kind of helps hold the boot in there so you can get the spring in it and the cap. So you gotta take the little loop-de-loop -loop and line it up with the hole. Spring. All right guys, so I've cleaned in a set of carbs and it's got this air vent valve on the side. Well, I started looking at it and I could see daylight between this bottom piece here and it had rivets on it, not bolts. So I didn't really know how to go about changing this and I couldn't really find anything online. So I'm gonna show you what I did and then we're gonna see how well it runs. But I put it in a vise and I filed the top of the rivets off so that the, the stems were still there because they're not really rivets because there's nothing on the, the top of this. So I just filed them off and then I got a screwdriver in there and popped it off. And the old gasket looked like this, it was sucked in. So I had a piece of gasket material laying around and I cut it open. I don't really think this inner diameter has too much to do with it. I think it's just clearance for the valve. 
right there. So, all right, so we're gonna, I got this cut out. I'm gonna put some gasket sealer on each side of it. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this back on here and I'm probably gonna put a pair of channel locks here and here. And I'm gonna take a prick punch and try to flare those edges out a little bit. And I think maybe just a touch of JB Weld. And then we're gonna go from there. That's just gotta kind of hold this sealed shut. So we'll see. All right, we got it done. I got the hoses back on it. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but what I ended up doing on this air vent valve is drilling out the center of these studs and then uh, pretty much the smallest drill bit. Um, then I had some grip wire for like doing grips on dirt bikes and I ended up just threading it through it and then wiring it down. And I stuck the end of this in my mouth and it didn't feel like it was leaking and it's way better than it was. So I'd cut, I made a gasket, put a little gasket sealer on each side and then got it sucked down with vice grips. I uh, drilled it, I stuck a prick punch in there and kind of flared the end out and that kind of held it. But then I put the wire tie on it to just hold it. So, I mean, for a 30 year old bike, we're gonna try it, so. All right, I think this one's done for now.